time now for FOMO. Today we are looking at Shopify with an analyst upgrade from B of A as they said that maybe things could have turned the corner at least at this point is, is the hope after Shopify has pulled back pretty substantially. But joining me now to discuss more on this analyst note and some other analyst notes we've actually seen on Shopify, I'd like to welcome in Caroline Woods, Senior Markets Correspondent for the network. So Caroline, thank you for being with us today as always and walk us through what you're seeing with the story. Well, Shopify share is up more than 7% today after getting some bullish calls from Wall Street analysts. Uh, shares have been really under pressure this year, as you pointed out. They're still down about 11.5% year to date, despite today's big move higher. They're basically unchanged for the year, only up about three tenths of a percent for the past one year. But some analysts are looking at this as a buying opportunity ahead of earnings on July 31st, including B of A, as you mentioned. B of A upgraded. Uh, Shopify to buy from neutral with a price target of $82. That's up from $78. So it's currently trading around $69. So a little less than 20% upside from current levels. B of A thinks Shopify has reached an inflection point uh, following years of declining margins. They say they believe the company has turned a corner based on or on balanced growth and margin under new CFO Jeff Hoffmeister. B of A is forecasting solid revenue growth and free cash flow conversion from here, driven by a few different things, including solid high single-digit baseline e-commerce growth, steady share gains, and disciplined expense spending. Saying revenue growth and disciplined spending point to healthy margin expansion going forward. They're forecasting 17.4% operating margin for fiscal year 2026. That's up from 14.3% in uh, fiscal year 2024. And they expect upside to Q2 revenue growth of about 23%. Saying Shopify appears well positioned to continue capturing share of the e commerce market while achieving better scale and free cash flow conversion. So, that's B of A. Meanwhile, Wolf Research actually initiated coverage of Shopify with an outperform rating and an $80 price target. Says Shopify is extending its leadership position with ongoing share gains driven by successful product ex execution and total addressable market expansion. So Shopify is, a, you know, a commerce platform that really helps companies develop their e-commerce platform, their infrastructure. And it's it's funny because it's a, a company I didn't realize how much I actually technically use uh, without actually even knowing it. And if I, you know, download the Shopify app, I quite enjoy it because it actually aggregates so many different uh, different purchases that I've made and you can actually track right from there. So uh, I, I'm a big user of Shopify and I didn't even realize it until recently. That's a pro tip, it sounds like, Caroline. I didn't even know they had a consumer-facing app. Oftentimes, these companies do their best when they hang in the backdrop, but if it helps you track and keep, uh, keep track of all these various purchases, it sounds like a potential win. might be something I have to look into uh, after the program. That being said, though, it's been a really mixed picture. Today alone kind of changes the trajectory of the last quarter. It's now kind of back to even over the last three months, but it's down 15% over the last six. It's flat on a yearly basis, but it's lost 50% of its value uh, over the last uh, three years. And even more than that, if you look at that kind of cycle high that we had back in November of 2021, when the overall market kind of peaked out, uh, before falling for much of 2022. And bear in mind, too, this was a, a stock that had a 10 for 1 split. So at one point, this was a $1,700 stock, and we'd be trading at just under 700 now. So really a, a roller coaster ride for investors. But uh, it doesn't seem that it's shaken analysts too much. You mentioned a couple of them, Caroline, but I'm seeing like two and three still have a buy rating on Shopify despite all of this. Yeah, there's, sorry, two in three. I thought you meant two or three. I was going to say, no, I'm seeing 60% of analysts that have a buy rating. Yes, there's actually, you mentioned that November high. It's about 60% off that November 2021 high. So, yeah, it's, it's had a, a tough road, but analysts have been getting more bullish. It's not just B of A and Wolf. We saw Mark Mahaney over at Evercore ISI upgrade Shopify last month. Uh, it has a $75 price target and outperform rating. He talked about a very resilient long thesis to 
shop share is giving its large total addressable market, similar to what we heard from Wolf as well. It's very strong competitive position and upmarket opportunity. It's clear track record of successful product innovation and the potential for material ramp, materially ramping profitability. And that was in June, but actually uh, just recently he uh, added Shopify to his list of top large cap longs. So uh, that, that joins the ranks of Alphabet and Uber Technologies, removed Amazon and Expedia from that group, but called Shopify a best in class e-commerce platform business. So Evercore getting more bullish as well. But as I said, about 59%, almost 60% of analysts at this point have a buy rating on shares. The median price target is $75, so about $5 upside from current levels. So not anywhere near those COVID highs, but you know, a, a lot of analysts, you know, the majority would say it's a good buying opportunity right now ahead of earnings on the 31st. Yeah, and Caroline, I think this has been such an interesting name because this is also pretty well integrated in my life, and I feel like one that people use more frequently than they even realize. But it's been such an underperformer, and it's like we talk about the, the strength in e-commerce. We look at other names like an Amazon, for example, and it's amazing to me that, that Shopify continues to be as disappointing as it has, frankly, because of the fact that I feel like it does serve such a an important market. I mean, and we're up, I know, 7% today, so it feels somewhat ironic to be saying this, but I guess I'm just still a little bit confused by its underperformance as of late. Well, it's it's not the Amazon, though, because it's not actually selling the goods. It's helping the companies with the infrastructure so that they can sell the goods. So it's the more of the platform than the actual retailer. So they do have that consumer facing app, as I had mentioned, that uh, Alex might be looking up right now. But I, I will say, though, they do offer shop dollars or there's some sort of branding and it can be like nine times. So if if you've used Shopify on the, you know, to pay on the app, um, they're on the company's websites. They actually give you incentive to continue using Shopify. So it seems like they are skewing more consumer focus. That's how I actually discovered that they even had the app because I'm like, oh, my $2.50 could be worth $25 if I shop on these specific retailers. So they are trying to become more consumer focused, it seems. And I mean, these analysts certainly have laid the case for reasons that they're bullish. Uh, it's giving a, a nice boost to shares today. But yeah, it's hard to kind of compare to some of the other actual retailers just because it is more of the, the back end uh, of retail. That's such a good point, too. I mean, like, I, I know I made the comparison myself to Amazon, but they are very different companies, and I think that speaks actually to some of the divergence we've seen in performance. But we will leave it there. Great insight, as always. Caroline Woods, Senior Markets Correspondent for the Network.